that, ladies and gentlemen, is our coil. Oops. Come on, you sod. So we'll uh, clean this up a bit and we'll get that tested. Right then, so we've got this coil off, got it cleaned, dish. So um, disconnected the uh, HT cap, you can just twist that off, it's got a little threaded uh, end in there. So, before we get onto the coil, the first thing I want to do is turn on this jobby and I want to test my HT cap. It should be about 4. 4.3 kilo ohms. That sounds good. Awesome. So now we've tested that. Um, in coils they have two windings. If you don't know what windings are, I'll explain in another video. We'll go about coils, we'll probably cut one apart and look inside, etc. But uh, really what you want to test is there's a primary coil, uh, primary windings, a coil, and uh, secondary windings. So what we want to do is we want to test our, our primary first. And it should be between 2.5 and 3.5 well, really. So we're bang on 3, so we're all good there. Right, so we'll, then we'll do the secondary windings, which is here. And in the uh, HT lead in the end. Oh, that's good. It's so maybe between 12 and 18, that's what we're looking for. Killer ohms, and that's 14 and a half, that's bang on in the middle. Um, you might be asking, well, which one of these is it? These terminals? Doesn't matter. Plug into that one. Plug in the end of there. Get the same reading. So, this coil is all good. Um, I'm going to right left on this one. We'll get the other one out and test that. So, we'll do what we did before, we'll test the cap. Five kilo ohms, that's a bit higher than the other one, which is 4.3 or something. Yeah, it's a little bit of spec though. It's alright. Might think about getting them replaced anyway. An actual coil. So this is on the side of the cylinder that's causing the issues. Is it this that's causing the issue? Nope, so that's our primary winding. Like I said, it's going to be between about 2.5 and 3.5, so 3 is bang in the middle. That's good. Now we'll do the secondary. 14.6, pretty much nearly exactly the same as the other one. So the coils are good, so there's no need to swap them. Alright, so I fit the coils back on and uh, we've done something. on the button a bit easier. Now it's a warmer day today, but that should and shouldn't help. So, um, yeah, she still seems a slight bit ropey. Still got that thudding that I don't like. And, um, so the next move is to, it's something I should have done and I didn't do. Um, is measure the uh, float height someone commented, which is something I was going to get around to, but uh, fair shout anyway. Um, and we're going to set the float height, check the float height, and then set it if it needs resetting, especially for the right hand side car because that's the one that seems to be giving us the issues. So, uh, yeah, we'll get it there. Well, we uh, seem to still have our gremlin, so it must be carbs. 
next. some throttle we're going above the idle jets operating envelope and we're starting onto the main jet and that's when she starts giving us a kick in the ass which is probably <laughs> seeing then she just fucks us off yeah and then she's had it so back to the car for me thinks so just as proof of concept It, it just sods you off. So we have a carb issue. Um, I didn't balance the floats properly. Um, I'm going to show you, not using a ruler, but using pipes and fluid, which is really the best way to um, uh, level out your uh, or to measure your uh, float height. Any road, so uh, we'll be taking the cars back out and uh, going through that. So I didn't go through this before, but I'll quickly go through it now. So there's three screws that you have to remove from your snorkel. That one. That one. And that one. This is so you can remove your air box because that's sat right on top of our carbs. I'm using, you might have noticed before previously, I'm using clear pipe so I can see fuel and drawn in. Um, so I'm not chasing my tail with that. Take your air filter out. All this means is just so we can get inside. It's a bit of a faff. But uh, not the end of the world. So, move our tank. Bleed the hose there, we can move out of the way. There's this bracket on the top, but I've got the screws quite loose. Because um, we'll probably go in and out and in and out and out, so I've got to tighten them up. So then this bracket comes off. I've already loosened these clamps. They go onto the carbs. Air box. It's lovely and clean inside. One of the things I do have is I have a tiny, tiny bit. Oh no, that's all fuel. So in the bottom of the airbox, there's a bit of this crappy stuff. It's not nice and clean and fresh, which is a good sign because that means fresh fuel isn't being spat back out the carbs. You can create a back pressure inside the carbs. So next thing we need to do. Disconnect the tank, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. There's only one thing for it. 
tank on the floor as well. <laughs> Stop, look. Pull it off. If you're going to pull a fuel line off with it, it's got some residual fuel in. Don't ever look at it when you lever it off because you'll just get eyeballs full of petrol. And that is not fun. So that's them two lines off. Move the tank out of the way. and tight because you was you was gonna be in and out. But there's um choke cable you can just pull your choke in manually like that on your slider and then that should get some foot of poker screwdriver, pop that out, it's the choke gone. And then there's a little eight mil nut. So when you take these cables off, and if your throttle position was right, when you, uh, if and when you come around to doing this, the top one don't adjust whatsoever, the bottom one is what you can tighten against. It's a bit of a pain in the ass to get to it first, but um, this is your stop, so you don't want to adjust that one otherwise. you have to start all over again with throttle adjustments. So that's that off. And three cables out of the way. We've got a vacuum return to the that one which is to the uh, fuel tap. We have this one which is your main fuel line in. Pull that off, that's got a bit of petrol in it. That's the end of the world. At the bottom we have a coolant line this side, pull that off, horrible, slightly warm, shitty water comes out. On this side, we've got the other one, which is here. I can hear cool one coming out. It's just water for now. The reason why that's done that is because let the air come out, and then you can give the calves a wiggle. Out the come. Jobs are good. You've seen me do play around with these before. There's nothing magical about them. Still some, oh. <laughs> Still some fuel in there. Just as a side note, we've got a slight bit of um, fuel on the bottom of these manifolds, but it's nothing crazy. It's only a tiny amount, which is kind of expected um, on the bottom of the uh, inlet parts, and that's usually because this thing's choking out, as you've heard when we're running it. It's choked out at some point, and it's um, deposited the fuel because the fuel's heavier than air. So after it's choked out, it's kind of left a vapor, and that vapor condenses on the bottom of the rubber. But I don't know if you can see, but the inlet valve in there looks pretty clean. I don't know if this is uh, too dark for the camera or not. It doesn't like it. Oh, there we go. It's nicely focused on the inside of there. That looks all nice and clean. There's no oil, rising oil or any oil that looks like it's come down the stem. So, uh, like I say, without completely pulling this apart, which I will do one day. Um, you can kind of just look and check at little things if and when you get a chance to look at them. <laughs> 